Hey everybody, Vivian here to do a mixed media tag tutorial. This uh, video is in conjunction with a guest blog post that I'm doing over on the Sizzix blog. It's it's a huge day for me. I'm really excited and I want to thank everybody at Sizzix and Tammy especially for this opportunity. Uh, this is a tag I made for Breast Cancer Awareness Month. I just wanted to share it with you. Um, it uses the Sizzix tag and book plates die as well as the mini butterflies die. Uh, the word transcend is was made using um, the typeset die, the alphabet typeset die from Sizzix. This is a tag I made um, that was published recent in the most recent issue of Paper House magazine. It uses that same tag and book plate die, which I just use like crazy. It's the perfect size and shape for me, as well as Snowflake's number three die from Sizzix. Um, as you can see, there's some heat embossing, stamping, masking tape, and especially hot glue, which I've just been having a ball playing around with. So today I'm going to share with you a mixed media tag using some of the same techniques. Here's the tag and book plates die. And it's a steel rule die. And you Sizzix fans, who are primarily going to probably watch this, already know how sturdy and great those dies are. I try to collect as many of these as I possibly can, the steel rule dies from Sizzix. And that was the bird and branch die that I'm going to use uh, for my focal image in this tag. So I'm going to send my tag and book plates die through my big shot with a really sturdy piece of white cardstock. It must be sturdy because we are going to miss that thing like crazy. So you want something that's really going to hold up to a lot of media, applications of media. Here's some chipboard that I'm upcycling from a cereal box and I'm sending that through. So the other great thing about these big dies is everything I've wanted to put through the machine with my big dies, I've been able to put through the machine and I've been able to cut these great shapes that um, I can alter and many designers can alter to suit their particular styles. I'm going to apply some gesso to my tag using a credit card, something expired hopefully, uh, or a library card, medical insurance card, whatever, something like that. And I'm randomly applying it to my tag, making sure to leave some areas bare without any gesso. And I'll explain a little bit in a second why I did that. I also gessoed my bird image because I want it to, uh, I want the colors that I missed on top and I ink on top to show up really clearly. So as you can see, when I missed my tag, the places that don't have gesso are accepting that media a lot more willingly than the areas that have the gesso. And I think having applied the gesso in that random fashion gives you a really natural looking background. So that was a Tattered Angels Mist in Apple. And the one I'm applying right now is one of their newer sheer mists. And that's the color is just pink. Uh, the key with all of these projects, the first two that I showed you and this one that we're working on together today, is to start light and then go dark. I love that variation that shows up in those areas. Um, this is a woodblock stamp from Hampton Art and Seven Gypsies. It's a nice distressed clock. Um, these stamps, uh, the Hampton Art Seven Gypsies collaborations are always really great for those um, vintage or grungy projects that you've got. I love these stamps. And I applied some watermark ink to the stamp face and I'm just going to make sure I get a really good stamp there. Um, so I'm pressing down pretty hard because my surface isn't completely flat anymore because of all that I've been doing to it. So you can see there's that nice clear sticky impression there and we're going to pour some um, clear embossing powder on top. And I do this with a lot of my mixed media projects in order to create a resist. For this project, I don't really want to see those rectangular edges. I want a really organic feeling in my project. Um, so I sort of wiped away the, the edges of that stamped image. And the final step, which always 
gives me so much pleasure and the sense of wonder is heating that thing up with my heat tool. It's not a blow dryer, it's a spe specific heat tool for this type of crafting activity that you can get um, in a craft supply store. And there you have the resist. So from here on in, those areas that have been heat embossed will resist the application of media. This is another Hampton Arts 7 Gypsies woodblock stamp. And it's a great texture stamp. It, it adds some depth to your projects, I think, without having to go to this to the extent of using texture pastes and that kind of stuff. I've I readily have embossing materials in my craft space, so I, I use this technique quite a bit. I stamped that all over um, and did a little bit of wiping so I don't have those hard edges. And I'm going through the same process with um, with this stamp as well. So aside from that clock image, the rest of my tag is going to have that distressed polka dot texture on top of it. So we tap that from underneath to make sure you get rid of any excess. And then you heat that sucker up. So right now the tag is pretty light. Like I said, we want to start light and go dark because once you go dark, you can't go back, especially with this transparent stuff. If I was to use like a pigment ink, which you can some uh, layer on top of each other, you might be able to go back. But with this type of stuff, you can't go back. Um, what I've also been doing after I missed, if you just noticed, I sprayed some water on top. So in that way, it's not a completely random, spontaneous experience. You can sort of guide the colors um, where you want them to go. I think a lot of people are nervous about spritzing, and when they do spritz, it's just the tiniest, measliest bit of spritz. For this type of project, we're going whole hog. So I'm just deciding on where I want to place it. Um, place this beautiful bird image that I die cut from the bird and branch die. And um, I'm, I'm hot gluing that down. So just the, the lightest covering of hot glue on the back side. And then I'm going to stick that down on top of my tag. So after I did that, um, next we have the masking tape. I know a lot of people just lay down that masking tape. I actually really love to wrinkle my masking tape. Um, wrinkle my masking tape as I'm laying it down. Uh, with the, I get a really wide thing of masking tape, wide roll of masking tape, and I create, um, I rip all the edges so that they're um, not hard, straight edges. And I lay that down um, while wrinkling. Later, those wrinkles are going to really catch your mists, and I'm hoping, as they did in, my, in the first tags that I showed you, they really um, create a lot of depth in your project because the darker colors that you spray will go in all those nooks and crannies and create some really cool effects. So I'm just gessoing on top of the masking taped areas, and I'm letting that gesso go all over my tag. Um, I mean, I don't want to cover up all the effects that I've done already, but um, we're just we're going to be adding a lot more media, so it really doesn't matter very much. By adding the gesso to the masking tape surface, I'm I'm creating a more absorptive surface. Here's more of that light pink. Like I said, we start light and go dark, and now I'm just really um, laying that on there pretty thick. I think my gesso is not quite dry, so um, this sheer spray in certain areas is turning a little bit opaque, which is fine. Now that that's dry, I'm uh, using my hot glue gun. And usually, when we use our hot glue, we do our best to hide it. <laughs> um, but I've been playing around with it quite a bit. Um, to create what I call an organic vascular effect. Um, as you can see, I created those wrinkles in sort of a diagonal up and down um, 
across my tag. And I, I'm moving my hot glue gun around the tag in the same way to add that sense of movement. And um, in when I apply the hot glue gun, I don't want like a uniform sized strip. I want a lot of vari variation. So I'm pressing hard, I'm pressing light, uh, I'm lifting the gun, I'm dropping the gun down to create a lot of variety in the patterns of glue gun that I lay down. So now I'm going to go a little bit darker with that apple color. And I'm putting it right up against my tag so it gets into all those nooks and crannies. Especially as I start to go dark, I really want that darkness to get into those nooks and crannies to make my focal image pop. Later, I'm going to add um, some more opaque media to the raised surfaces, and you'll see how it, it, the whole thing comes together really nicely. And I'm tilting that tag this way and that to get all those colors to move all over my tag in a really natural way. Now you want to be careful about applying mists um, at the same time because unless you know a lot about color, you run the risk of your project getting really muddy. Um, this project I wanted actually to be rather grungy and dark. Um, I'm using a Distress Stain in Chipped Sapphire. It's a really rich, deep blue. And now I'm going to apply a darker mist. This is a Maya Road mist in Amethyst Metallic. I'm trying desperately to accumulate my stash of mists. They're some of my most favorite media. Uh, so I, I have kind of an obscenely large collection at this point. But I, I'm going to use it all up. <laughs> So uh, I applied some of that purple, and I also applied a Tattered angel Angel's color in Raven, which is nearly black. So we're going really dark, and then we're lightening it up in certain places with some water. Now you're probably thinking at this point, whoa, that's just a mess. What the heck is she doing? <laughs> But just wait, just be patient. I'm really happy with the way this tag turned out. So this dried pretty much. Now I'm going over with some pigment inks. These are all um, color box, very juicy, very wet pigment inks. They're called um, mixed media inks. And uh, I went over the bird with some black and I created a little bit of a gradient into gray. Now I'm going over the whole thing with one of the gray shades. That gray shade is called Pewter. And as a final step, I'm going to go over uh, with this little cosmetic sponge. I'm going to go over on top of everything with some of the white color of the mixed media inks, and this is called Jasmine. So with the with these inks, you can go dark to light because it's somewhat opaque, um, and the white's going to show up now. On top of all my vascular patterns, as well as the shapes of the branches from the dye, I decided. Uh, off screen to add a little bit more black in certain places to guide the viewer's eye around the tag. So you'll see that in just a second, but this is how it looks at this stage. So there's a lot of depth. It almost looks like rock patterns in certain places because of the masking tape. So you can see here I, I added more black, somewhat in a stream-like shape. Um, and I'm going to adhere the text. So I don't know if you ever wake up in the morning with a song in your head, 
Sometimes I wake up in the morning with a song in my head, and there's absolutely no reason for it to be there. This song, Blackbird by the Beatles, has been in my head for days. And there's just a lot of symbolism in this, in the simple lyrics. I think they're gorgeous. Uh, it says, take these broken wings and learn to fly. All your life, you were only waiting for this moment to arise. Uh, so I think it's a lot about diligence and hope, endurance, um, and ultimately freedom. So I thought about this and thought about this and thought about this. Um, this blog post really meant quite a bit to me. So I'm really happy with the way it turned out. Um, I think it would make a great gift um, or it would be a great thing to have hanging um, in your own private space to uh, give you that little kick of inspiration when you need it. I love this, I love this song um, and the meaning behind it. This is a bit of a seam binding in an olive color from Really Reasonable Ribbon. And I think it really goes well with the little touch of green that you see in the lightest parts of my tag. In just a second, I'm going to show you some stills of the tag in its final state. Um, I would love for you to come visit me on my blog. That's contadinak.wordpress.com. I post rather frequently over there with various paper crafts, mixed media projects, watercolor paintings, musings, um, lots of stuff to get your crafty mojo going on. I'm also going to have plenty of videos to come on my YouTube channel, which is Contadina K. I'm uh, an educator with Scraps of Darkness, and I'll be working exclusively with their color and creativity add-ons, which is all about mixed media. So if you're interested in that, side of the crafty universe, uh, I encourage you to subscribe to me here on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I just want to say before signing off, thank you so much Sizzix for this opportunity. Uh, Sizzix is one of my absolute favorite companies and um, the products that I get from them form the backbone of my crafting toolbox. So I really appreciate this opportunity. Thank you again, and I hope to see you guys soon in the crafty ether. Bye-bye.